Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing the papers. Mariam had a story. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, no fewer than 86 ministries, agencies and departments of governments are owing Abuja Electricity Distribution Company to the tune of 47 mm. billion naira. Mm. Mm. The management of AEDC says the presidential villa owes the disco the sum of 923.9 uh, million naira. National Security Advisor owes 95.9 billion. The Ministry of Federal Capital Territory being supervised owes the sum of 7.57 billion naira, mm. while the Adebayo Adelabo Ministry of Power is indebted to the tune of 78 million naira. Hmm. <laughs> See, yeah, the <laughs> ministries, they listed them Welcome. billions and billions and billions no, of naira. They said that, uh, let me read here, it says that they have. They said this long-standing unpaid, unpaid bills for services rendered to them through that they have been working, trying to work with the ministries and departments mm. and agencies over a long period of time to see how they can resolve this issue, pay up the bills. They said to no avail. See, they are threatening to disconnect them in 10 days should they fail to pay up their debt. Mm. They have, so they've given them a notice and they said after the expiration of 10 days from Wednesday the 28th of February, they will embark on this connection of services to them until, you know, they pay up their debt. And then they go ahead to name yeah. all of the MDAs that owe them money. I'm and happy like, they came to the new papers for this. So yes. It's so embarrassing. You know, and you hear all the time they are subsidizing, they are subsidizing, but you, the main people, you are not even paying them. So that's why, that, that is why they are cutting our own throats. Ah, to make up for all the debts that you know they have been oh, yeah. unable to get. So back. Nigerian army and their barracks always owe the discos, and they don't dare go and cut their party. Okay, the, <laughs> the organized labor on Monday began mobilizing its members for a nationwide uh, protest slated for February 27th and 28th. Sources at the leadership of the NLC uh, told the correspondents at the punch, saying that they are um, they are going to go ahead because until things change. They plan to go ahead with the protests planned uh, for those dates. Arising from the crucial meeting, the labor union sources agreed to demand the implementation of the agreement with the federal government without further delay. So according to them, the federal government um, still owes them based on the agreement that was um, signed. Um, according to the 14-day ultimatum by labor, says that they'll, they'll, be, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll have a two-day nationwide protest um, I thought it was because of the hardship of the subsidy, but it's actually more about the fact that they are not, um, the government has not um, pulled through on the agreement that was already um, signed by both parties. Uh, I told one of the correspondents that the protest would be held as planned and agreed at the meeting, uh, said that they have no reasons to back down on this protest until things change um, from the federal government's angle. Any other story in punch? Uh, there's one that says, <coughs> one of the headlines here is that the Senate has asked the Federal Inland Revenue Service to suspend um, tax waivers up to the tune of 17 trillion naira. And then the reason is because uh, of abuse of the waivers, of the tax waivers. The chairman of the, the, Sen the Senate through the Committee on Finance has uh, told the FIRS to to, um, sorry, basically what they are trying to say is that the projection of 19 trillion naira as the total tax collection for 2024 is good when compared to the 11.16 trillion achieved in 2023, right. but that the Senate believes that the FRS can do more to the tune of 30 trillion naira if those waivers are, you know, put aside and collected. So they're also asking that, you know, the, the FRS <laughs> substitutes waivers with a rebating system. Yes, mm. exactly. Hoping that that one will bring a solution. Okay, very quickly now, Daily Sun, anti-government protest shakes Ibadan. Mm. New Enugu City, no homes demolished, land grammars creating problems, says government. UK, Nigerian parents battle to pay school fees as exchange rates hit... Hmm. I can't even say the Naira. The equivalent. <laughs> I can't even say it. Hit over 2,000 Naira to the dollar. Yeah. Tinubu back in Abuja after AU summit in Addis Ababa. Play to Governor PDP Chairman condemns clean of APC spokesperson. Hepatitis kills 28 in Nasara. Lawmakers urge Governor to declare state of emergency. Government abducts corpse family members in Inugu demand 50 million Naira ransom. All theft. Navy uncovers 14 illegal bunkering sites in rivers. 
and I won Edo APC primary with over 6,000 votes, says Okwe Borlo. Okay, which story are we starting? So the, one of the highest beneficiaries of the subsidy or difference usually paid on dollar by government are Nigerian students and uh, Nigerian parents whose kids are in high institutions in the UK are presently feeling the heat. They're saying this all-time high of 2,000 plus in, um, of dollar to the pound is affecting them. Presently, UK schools have not increased their fees, but they have already have a felt increase because, you know, they have to source dollar, uh, pounds at that higher rate. And um, they have different parents' accounts on the story and, uh, you know, practitioners in the business who are also trying to get UK schools to stay school fees at their present cost, but I'm thinking, so all the pounds will be subsidizing for schools. Because you know when somebody goes to UK and comes and says, what did Nigeria do for me? Remember that your parents paid subsidized pounds for you. Mm. Just from here. So mm. now that we can no longer do this is how Nigeria did something for those who have benefited in the past. Mm, that's another way of looking at it too. That's a major way of looking that, that, at it. That's, 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 that's a topic that on its own. Mm. You've been subsidizing. Okay. So those of you for who school abroad, you've been going. subsidizing your fees. You've been subsidizing your school fees mm. for you. Because yeah. you, you take from here. Everybody's... Hmm. That's some deep stuff, man. Yeah. yeah, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> hepatitis. Um, there's an outbreak of hepatitis in Nasrallah State. Um, this was brought to our attention by uh, Musa Ibrahim, who is the representative of Doma South constituency, um, where, where the AK development area is situated. And that's where 28 people have died from the outbreak of hepatitis. And they are asking, so there was an important... Um, session at the um, state assembly where they are asking their governor to declare a state of emergency, you know, as a result of this um, um, deadly disease. Um, and um, this story is just saying that the motion is being supported by everyone and also the speaker underscored the necessity for prompt action, saying a state of emergency should be declared on hepatitis and other diseases in the states. I know that um, hepatitis, this is a serious disease. People would describe, in fact, medical uh, personnel have described it as worse than HIV. That's in mm -hmm. the way that it is being transmitted, you know. So this is, is, is a serious case and I hope that we're able to quickly um, resolve this and put up all the necessary um, interventions to curb this as soon as possible. Okay, so let me take the major headlines. So, um Scores of angry youths um, yesterday hit the streets in Ibadan. Um, we protest especially to demand urgent action from the president uh, as regards the cushioning effect of the unbearable living conditions caused by the rising cost of living, <clears throat> food prices, which they describe as a full-blown hunger crisis. The hardship tag and Nigeria hardship caused gridlock in many parts of um, um, Ibadan. Um, though the protest was quite peaceful, uh, there are lots of chants in being power, and, those, and, and people are just mm -hmm. going on and on. The Ajita youth kicked off the protest at the popular Mokola uh, roundabout amid heavy security presence to forestall any breakdown of law and order. It was quite peaceful for hours. Vehicle movements were going, were halted, and, um, and reduced throughout that, that entire environment. Uh, and they're just saying that the president must do something because many of them believed in the renewed hope and they're hoping that this hope that they are seeing doesn't look renewed. And they feel that the government must do something. They, according to them, some of their demands are, do you want to reduce our population, end food scarcity, open borders, and end hardship? A bag of cement has jumped to 5,300 naira. This is still it's much, it's much more, than, more than that. Okay, moving on now to Vanguard. <clears throat> Forex crisis 2024 budget suffers major dislocations. Wali Edun Cardoso's SEC management, management team Visit Wigwe's parents. FG cement manufacturers agree on 7,000 naira um, for 50 kg bag. Edo 2024 APC youth women take over secretariat's one sack of SWC. Electricity, forex inflation push meter prices up by 80%. Senate kicks against 17 trillion naira loss of tax waivers. An ECOWAS crisis go on, turns down FG ECOWAS invitation to speak on issue. Okay, which story are we taking? Vanguard. Vanguard. Me? Okay, yeah. so um, I'm Kadoso Wale Edu, SSC management team, visit Herbert Wigwe's parents. Uh, still on that very, very sad story. The finance minister and coordinating minister of the economy, Mr. Wale Edu, 
the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Olayemi Kaduso, and the management of the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, yesterday visited the parents of the um, late group CEO of Access Bank, Albert Wigwe, who died recently, uh, along with his wife, Doreen, and his mm. son. And they were the residents of the deceased parents, Pastor and Mrs. Shingo Wigwe, to commiserate with them over the loss of, his, of their son and, their, and his family. Still a very sad story. A lot of people mm. are still can't get over the news, exactly. shocking death of Abra Wigwe. Okay. Any other story in Vanguard? Um, yes. The, so they said the uh, former head of state and also one of the founding fathers of ECOWAS um, had been invited to wade into the crisis that is happening within the ECOWAS. As we know, um, you know, the West African states like Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, you know, uh, we're aware of the military coups that have happened there and also how e um, ECOWAS had in turn um, sanctioned those countries. So there's been issues about, you know, how to go forward because these countries feel that ECOWAS had placed these sanctions on them. They're inhumane mm. and they are not supporting them in their fight against terrorism and, you know, other things that, to why they believe led to the necessary in their own in their own view um, military coups and so the conversation really is how to go forward you know concerning it but this report is just saying that um, the former head of um, the former head of state um, Gawan had refused to um, you know be part of this conversation it does not say why I, I didn't actually see it I, I read through and it does not say why so I don't know if it was he does not think it's a conversation that he needs to wait in or if he was just for many other reasons he could not be there but uh, okay. this is something that we're dealing with at that level right now yeah okay final paper the nigerian tribune let's see still have not taken legal luminaries pay tribute to or your judiciary hold by the decree court session for akiri dolu um lion kills oau zookeeper we talked about that nine passengers kidnapped in kogi abductors demand 2.6 million naira FG commences payments of withheld as to salaries. Residents in Bribadon protest over economic hardship. Experts differ as food inflation increased by 40% in eight months under Tinumbu. Mm. And the unemployment rate in Nigeria rose to 5% in Q3. Okay, which story? So the Oyo State um, MBA as well as, you know, the <coughs> workers had a valedictory. What's it called? Yes. Yeah, valedictory. Service uh, uh, for the late... Um, on those states governor and um, the luminaries were present, the former MBA presidents, present ones, and practitioners within or your states were all in attendance. Sadly, I, I totally almost forgot he's not been buried formally, and this just brought back to mind. Yeah. Mm. Really, really sad. Uh, I think this burial is probably end of the, it was the end of this month, I'm told. Mm. Okay, let's find, and that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we want our hot topic of today. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back.